tutorial, I'm going to show you guys how to create a melee weapon system just like this in Hyperpad. Oh I have enemies spawning all around the scene that are moving towards me and I'm swinging my sword to attack them. I can move around with the left joystick and I can swing my sword with the right joystick. Boys. The direction I point my right joystick is where the player will attack. How do we do that? Okay, let's start simple. I'm just gonna start with this scene. The enemies are going to move towards the player. My player can move around and the enemies can hurt us, but we don't have the ability to attack yet. That's what we're going to work on in this tutorial. If you guys want to see a tutorial on other RPG elements, let me know what you want. I might actually do it. Oh my gosh, yes! Diving into the tutorial. This is what the scene looks like in the editor. You can hide the global UI to make things easier if you want. Just make sure you toggle it back before playing. Awesome, I think we're ready. First things first, we need a cursor so we can see where we are hitting. So I'm going to add a cursor graphic to the scene. You can use any graphic you want. We it to what you think fits and make sure it's a scenery object so it doesn't collide with any other objects in the scene. Tap on this eye icon to make the cursor invisible. You can see how the object becomes semi-transparent. When playtesting, the cursor should be invisible. Awesome! The idea here is that we only want to show the cursor when we are using our melee attack, and we only melee attack while using the joystick. Back into the editor! I like to organize my behaviors into separate labels. As you can see, I have the behaviors responsible for moving the enemies towards the player in this label, and I have the behaviors responsible for spawning the enemies in the scene in this label. I'm going to add a new label and set the text to be Melee Attack Behaviors. This is where I will put all the behaviors for now. Let's go into the behaviors of this object. Awesome! Let's start simple. Let's make a shoulder cursor when we start touching the right joystick. Add a started touching behavior and in it, select the right joystick. Then add a set visibility behavior, plugging it under the started touching behavior and in it, select the cursor we've just made. Nice. Now we just have to hide it once we stop touching the right joystick. Of course, add a stopped touching behavior, selecting the right joystick again. We can duplicate the set visibility behavior plugging it under the stop touching behavior, and in it, we can set it to hide the graphic. Let's test it! Yeah, cool. This is what you should wow, see. So cool. Now, let's make it so this cursor moves to where we are going to be swinging our melee weapon. Back into the behaviors, let's add a joystick input behavior. In it, select the right joystick and make sure normalize output is enabled. This makes it so the values always range from negative 1 to positive 1, regardless of the size of the joystick. This just makes it easier for us in the long run, trust me. Alright, let's add a frame event behavior. Make sure it's set to on update. We're using this behavior so the cursor refreshes its position every frame. Because if we don't, we're gonna get this weird stuttering effect. It's disgusting. Ew. We want to move the cursor to the player, so add a move to object behavior under the frame event behavior. Select the cursor for the first object and select the player for the second object. Make sure the duration is zero. Next, let's move the cursor depending on the x and y values of this joystick input. So add a move by behavior. Select the cursor and plug in the x and y output fields from the joystick input behavior to this move by behavior. Also, make sure the duration is zero. Let's test the project. Hmm, the cursor is way too close to the player. Easy fix. Back into the behaviors, we want to multiply the x and y output from the joystick input behavior by a number larger than one. I'm going to grab two multiply values behaviors and in one of them, I'm going to multiply the x output from joystick input by, um, let's say 2.5. We can change this to anything if it's too big or too small. That's what she said. Awesome. Let's plug the output of this behavior in the x input field of this move by behavior. Cool. Now let's go to the other multiply values behavior. Multiply the y output from the joystick input behavior by the same number. Plug the output of this behavior in the y input field of this move by behavior. 
Let's test the project again. Awesome! And now our cursor can reach a good enough distance from the player. Looks nice. We finally finished the functionality of the cursor. Now let's have our player swing a melee weapon. Back into the scene, let's add a new graphic that will be the weapon that we will be using. We scale it to be a desirable size. Of course, you can use whatever graphic you want. Make sure this is a scenery object so it doesn't collide with anything. Keep in mind, we will be using the hit point test behavior for checking collisions of the enemies. I will explain what this behavior does later. I plan for the sword to rotate around the player. So I'm going to move the sword to be directly above the player and then move its anchor to be at the center of the player. Now if we rotate the sword, we can see it rotates around that point. Now we're getting somewhere. Also tap on the eye icon to make the sword invisible at the start, just like how we did it with the cursor. I'm a diving to the behaviors. <laughs> Why did I say that? Lol. Just like how the cursor only reveals itself when using the right joystick, let's do the same thing with the sword. We can duplicate these behaviors like so, select the sword object for both, and plug those bad boys in. Great! Let's also make it so the sword is constantly moving towards the player like the cursor. Just duplicate this move to object behavior and select the sword for the first object. Yeah, just like that. If we test out our project now, every time we use the right joystick, we should have a sword following the player. Cool. Back to the behaviors. Now, the way that the sword is going to work is going to be different than the cursor. Um, we are going to use a timer, timer, so we can repeatedly swing our sword back and forth. Toggle on start immediately. Set the duration to maybe like 0.5 seconds. You can always adjust the duration to be whatever you want. We are going to add a rotate to angle behavior. Select the sword object and set the angle to be the output angle of the joystick input behavior. If we try our project, this is what we get. It's okay, but let's make it swing back and forth. Add a rotate by behavior. Rotate the sword by negative 45 degrees with zero duration. Let's duplicate this behavior. This time, rotating it to by like 90 degrees and having a 0.25 second duration. Duplicate this behavior again, this time rotating it by negative 90 degrees, also with a 0.25 second duration. The reason why I'm using 0.25 seconds is because it is half the duration of the timer, which is 0.5 seconds. When we play our project, we can see our sword is swinging back and forth. It loops perfectly. Though the animation does look a little weird because it's linear, so let's fix that. Change the transition of these behaviors to be in out sign. Or you can select another transition you like. Um, I think this one looks good for now. <laughs> now our swinging animation looks great, but our attacks are not functional yet. So let's work on that. Yes, this is where the hit point test behavior comes into play. It's similar to the raycast test behavior, except instead of a ray, the hit point test behavior places an imaginary point or a circle on the scene and checks if any object is intersecting with it. That's the simplest way I can explain it, and for more technical details, you can refer to the documentation I have linked below. In this case, we want to place a circle where the player is swinging their melee weapon and check if it intersects any enemies. If it does intersect any of the enemies, then the enemies that were hit should take damage. Fun fact, this is the same way Super Smash Bros determines when the character should take damage. They place circles on the scene, check if the opponent is intersecting with the circles, and apply damage if so. They call these hitboxes, even though they look like circles. Um, whatever, I thought that was a cool thing to mention. Well, let's do something like that in our project. Yes. We want to get the position of the cursor because that will be where our hitbox is going to be. So let's add the get position behavior and have it get the position of the cursor. Add the hit point test behavior after it. And it may look intimidating at first, but it will all make sense once you read all about these options in the reference. The hit test type should be all objects. This will make sure that every single enemy that was hit will be registered instead of only one of them. 
Make sure the layer is the same layer that the enemies are on, which in our project is the main layer. We also want to target the enemies and I've already added a tag to my enemies called enemy. So I just set the target objects to be the enemy tag. Of course, set the position of the hitbox to be the position of the cursor. And the origin size would be how big our circle would be. A larger number means a larger circle. Larger Let's use 2.5 meters for our case. Of course, you can change this to be any value you like. Maybe you have a larger weapon or whatever. Huh? Awesome, we're almost done! <laughs> now, we just want to damage the enemies that have intersected with this hitbox and that's easy. In the enemy object, I've already programmed a receive message behavior. When this is triggered, the enemy takes damage. In my case, the enemy turns red for a split second and subtracts 1 from its health attribute. When the health reaches 0, the enemy is destroyed. Pretty simple. The key for this receive message behavior is damage. Remember that for later. Back to the melee attack behaviors, under the hit point test behavior, let's add a broadcast message behavior. The key will be the same as the receive message behavior we've seen before, which is damage. Nice. Don't worry about the broadcast fire, we won't use it. But let's disable the global toggle. This allows us to broadcast to specific objects instead of every single object in this scene. In this case, we want to broadcast to the enemies you just hit. Boom, just like that. And we're practically done here. Let's test it. Awesome. Wait, I'm still able to hit my enemies even when I'm not using the right joystick. Uh-oh, what's wrong? Well. The problem is I'm still actually swinging my sword in the background and we didn't program a way to stop it. So let's fix that. In the behaviors, use a set behavior state behavior and select the timer behavior. Set the mode to disable. Now this behavior will stop the timer, therefore we should stop swinging our weapon when we release the right joystick. Let's duplicate this behavior and put it above the timer. Set it to enable the behavior. This makes sure the timer is turned back on when we want to start swinging again. Oh my gosh, we're done! Look at that! A melee weapon system created using a hit point test and some other behaviors. Hmm. I do want it to inflict damage when the player swings back. So back into the behaviors, let's add a wait behavior of 0.25 seconds. The same duration time in both of the rotate by behaviors. Then just plug that bad boy to the get position test behavior. Just like the timer behavior, let's make sure the weight behavior isn't active when we are not swinging the sword. We can just duplicate these set behavior state behaviors and change them to be the weight behavior. Awesome. We now have a proper melee attack system. Let's add some sound effects for fun. I added one every time the player swings their sword and I also want to have a sound effect that plays when an enemy has been hit. So place down an if and have it check if intersecting is equal to 1. Then plug a play sound behavior and you're done. <laughs> yeah, that's it. This is cool! And you can spice it up with other stuff if you want, but I'll just leave it here. You guys do whatever you want with yes, this. Sir. That is all for this tutorial. If you had a keen eye, you probably noticed how I showcased a health bar under each enemy. If you guys want a tutorial on how to do that, let me know. I hope you guys can create some cool games with this melee attack mechanic. The possibilities are just endless at this point. I hope you all enjoyed this tutorial and I will see you later.